Today we're going to be discussing drinking while you play poker and also a little bit about nicotine as well. I come from southern German descent. We have a lot of alcoholism in the bloodline. We can drink a ton. I've never had a hangover in my life. My brother's never had a hangover in his life. He drinks way more than I do. When it comes to poker, I didn't let it affect my game negatively. If anything, I was trying to use it as an advantage. So I sit down, order a drink right away, boom. And then you're playing splashy, loud, lively, whatever. So they see you have a drink and then another one 15 minutes later, another one. I wouldn't even let the waitress pick up the empty glasses. I'd, I'd hoard them. I'd hoard other people's glasses. I'd grab empties off the waitress's tray and set them by my stack. So I had... So say I actually had six drinks. I made it look like I had like eight, nine, ten, just all over the place. People would be like, oh, this guy, this guy is juicy. And of course, I'm, I'm clapping. I'm having a good time talking. But I'm still playing really solid. Like really so I'm not even saying that because I was drinking. I was playing very solid. Maintained equally as high of an hourly then as I do now. But the reason why I don't drink anymore is it's health reasons. It's 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 bad for you. It's poison. So I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. And you know what makes Vegas different from these other cities when it comes to drinking while you play? It's free. It's all free. They show up. They will pour you a relentless amount. You can drink all night long. You can drink till you're blacked out. They don't care. They encourage that. They love that. But they, they'd rather you not be playing poker and instead be over at the high limit slots. But I'm going to get into that in just a moment. These other towns, Detroit, Scottsdale, Arizona, Florida, expensive. Texas, they have juicy card room. Bring your own beer. I don't even like know what that is. Do they have fridges in the corner and stuff? You can set it in. People are just, oh, yeah, let me get a beer here, you know. Vegas, it's free. So one of the first times I ever had to pay for a drink, I was in Detroit, Michigan. We were playing at the MGM Detroit. Waitress comes around, oh, would you like a beverage? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Give, give me a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> you know, whatever, some bullshit beer. Comes back 10 minutes later with the Michelob. You're grabbing at it. Oh, that'll be $14. What? $14 for Michelob Ultra? You give her the dollar. Honey, I do not want that. Get that away from me. Get the $14 for a Michelob Ultra? Are you kidding me? Florida's the same way. Arizona, same way. It's a blessing in disguise because it makes sure you never order a drink while you play. But the problem is you want other people to be drinking while you play. And if they're not ordering drinks because they're too expensive, the game's not as juicy. It can still be profitable. It's a different, different kind of vibe than you'll get in Vegas. Vegas, as you know from my other videos, it gets wildin', wildin' all the time. Super juicy. Alcohol, late night, and poker is always a good recipe for a great, great game course got to be bringing that too you already know alcohol can be very dangerous i have a friend i'm not going to mention his name but this guy was driving his bike home late at night blackout drunk slammed his face into the curb lost lost an eye completely lost an eye it was blackout when this happened here's the difference between black hawk and vegas and Black Hawk, if you're drinking, they will throw you out. They will try to keep it limited. The police hover like crazy in that mountain town. Like, you leave after a couple of drinks, they got you. They, they just wait. They sit around in the casinos looking for people that have been drinking. Pull them over as you're leaving. So my buddy, Lost and I, were playing craps in Black Hawk one night. We hardly even gotten settled in. We hadn't even had a drink yet. This guy had, had nothing to drink. Security throws him out. All right, he's got one eye, and he's got one that kind of cuts in a little bit. So you look at him, it's like, this guy looks fucked up. I mean, yeah, he looks fucked up. You know what I mean? Security comes up to him. Hey, you out of here. And he's sitting there like, what? And he gets all angry at you. It's like, man, they threw me out. <laughs> and it's like, oh, man, it's, it's kind of ironic. You know, it's like, you look fucked up. They're going to throw you out of the casino. You were fucked up when the accident happens. You know, what are you going to do? Vegas, if you get too fucked up, what do they do? They wave you in and they send you straight to the high limit slots. They have security, hold your hand, walk you in. You can hardly even walk. 
and they sit you down in the high limit slot room. They take the, the credit card or your debit, whatever, out of your, they take your hand, they take the card and they insert it into the machine just like that. Guy pats you on the back. Have a great night. Boom. Wake up the next day. What the fuck happened? You know what I mean? Like, what? Nicotine. Very dangerous. This day and age with all these vapes going around. Pouches, nicotine pouches. I'm against it all. Off all of it. Been off all of it. But at one point, I was on the vapes heavy. I'd play cards in between every hand. I would, fo- I would look at my hand, fold, get up, go blast the vape three or four or five times right around the corner. Come back, you never missed a hand. It was disturbing. The people in my game, was nobody ever said anything. I couldn't believe it, but they must have been looking at me like, man, this guy, this guy's got problems. Like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? Sometimes I wouldn't even look at the second card. I look at two of diamonds. Don't even send me another one. I'm going to go rip the vape more time, more time, a few more hits. Fiend status, fiender status. I knew it was horrible for my health. The nicotine, it does something weird with the brain where it's like this quick dopamine. You're able to focus a little bit. So it it didn't like hurt the poker game all that much. It kind of like linked everything together. Focus hard for the session, boom. But you'd be hit it all the time, man. I, I would hit that thing all the time. You know, the jewel... Fuck Jewel, by the way, man. I, I only rip mango pods. That's it. And then when they said no more mango, I said, fuck you, Jewel. Gone. Fuck you. I told everybody I know. And fuck no, I don't fucking smoke Jewel. Are you kidding me? Fuck them. But when it came to the mango pods, you buy them at the Walmart. Four pack. Highest nicotine. Five, six percent. Of course, always. The guy would be like, oh, I have three percent. Get that away from me. Why, why would I want that? Three percent? Buy your four pack, make sure your jewel's charged, sit in the parking lot at the Walmart, fumble it, jam it in, blast the whole pod in the parking lot. 400 hits right there. Just, it was like, and I'm sure I wasn't, wasn't the only person that it was like this for. Those things were bad news. If you try all the vapes, you knew it was bad for you. So when I was finally done with them, probably smoked them for like a year or something like something too long way too long you look around every everybody's still hitting them it kind of blows my mind everybody instant gratification but that's that's a different topic for another day i was like all right i'm i'm not gonna get into them every ever again i'm not gonna buy another one i'm never gonna hit this again three four days goes by you have your last urge you you get up you you start walking to the shop you're like strutting in there walk in it's like, oh, how much for the 3,000 puff pod? But the guy's like, that's going to be $39. And you look at him and you're like, thank you so much, sir, for making my decision that much easier. I'm grateful for you and what you do, you fucking prick. <laughs> I hope your shop gets burned down. But it was easy. It was like, oh, all right, it's too expensive. Of course, I'm not going to spend that kind of money for that kind of bullshit. It doesn't even do anything after a while. It's just like you're just a fiend. You wake up all day, go to bed all day. But if you're a nicotine addict and you're quitting nicotine and you play poker full time for a living, do not quit at the same time that you're going to go in and put in a lot of heavy hours. You go through that withdrawal. And if anybody go nicotine withdrawal, it's it's a lot. It is intense, man. You're in there five days, no nicotine, six days. And of course, you always go through a downswing when this is going to happen. Of course, that's just the way the energy works in the mind. Of course, when you're in there, oh, I'm going to play, I'm going to play 150 hours this month. I know I just quit nicotine, but I'm driven. I got to do something else. Let me, let me fill that nicotine void with more poker. Bad idea. (laughs) You're in there. You're in these games, bad beats start coming, you're, you're yelling at the deal, you're, you're like a different person in there, you're yelling at all the players, you're ready, you're like manic, ready to flip the, t- and you're usually a stoic person, at least for the most part, I mean, who knows how stoic people think I am, but yelling at people, bad beat, just screaming, like yelling at the full-blown screaming at the dealers, just like, man, like, I thought I knew this kid. Like, this kid's a fucking asshole. It's like, bro, you know it's because I'm off the nicotine. You haven't seen me blast the pen all night. You know? Like, come on. Chill out. Now, we're on the topic of nicotine. We've got to talk about those pouches. 
I was on those very briefly, not long at all. But of course, from what you just heard me say, I was a big fan for the pouches. Zin, knockoff Zin. I was on the knockoff Zin mostly. You'd always have one in every day. Wake up first thing, nothing. Just you probably you slept you slept with them in. You'd wake up and you like pull the one out, toss that one or two more. Multiple, always multiple. Because because at some point one didn't get it done. I mean I know it was the max nicotine content. One, two, three, boom. You know every little spot. It was a problem. But those things made me feel like death all the time. And the, the main reason why I quit those so quick is I just like, they messed up my digestive tract. I would shit straight liquid, like all the time. And of course you always had one or two in when you were on the toilet, you know? Because why wouldn't you? It's knock, knockoffs in. Like that, that was probably part, that is either part, part of their marketing or could be part of their marketing. Zin. You'll shit liquid. Quarterly sales up 250%. Kids look at it. Oh, Zin, like you mean shit liquid? Like, sure. But anybody that's on those now quit immediately. They're horrible. Fuck the companies. Fuck them. They got you. They got you. Quit that ASAP. No more nicotine ever. Do different things. Fill it. You got to fill the nicotine void with other things. Quit nicotine, drink spring water, switch the habit up. So whenever you do it, do something else. Don't do that for a while. Have some self-control. Have some discipline. That's all it takes, okay? Got to change your environment a little bit. Go on vacation for a couple of weeks. Easiest way to quit. When you come back and you look at that, that can and you're like, just don't. Throw them out. Make sure whoever you live with, if you live by yourself, right before you go on vacation, toss the pouches. That's all I have for you guys today. I know we just talked a little bit about poker, not a whole lot, but any of these bad vices, stop them immediately. Fill them with good vices. You'd be surprised. You cut out the trash, fill it with delayed gratification activities, your life will change for the better. You'll love yourself more. Your confidence is a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself. Cut out the trash, fill it with lovely things, your life will get lovely. Thank you.